Good evening. This is Tuesday, September 22nd, the regular meeting of the Clay Township Board at 6 p.m. in the community room at the John Hensel Government Center. Please rise for the pledge. Pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First order of business is approval of minutes. First one is Tuesday, June 23rd. So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. And the second one is from July 1st, uh, 2015. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in uh, favor? Just one second oh, on the one. Okay. Matt, we got here on one, and Mary, you weren't here on I the other. I didn't vote on this one. Okay, okay. That was so the one I know. was. That okay. Was, yeah. The second one. Okay, you were on the second one. You weren't here, so you. So okay, and then Matt was absent on July first, so it would be Mary and Paul that would have to vote on it. Whoa. On which one? When was I absent? Do you want? Were you here July 1st? Yeah. Well, it's not recorded. It's, it's because, you been, because I was looking at you. So you were here, so we need to amend that then. All right. But you were here. Okay. How could you miss this? <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I don't know. It, Debbie types these up. And so I was looking at it a while ago, and I'm thinking, huh. So that was it here July 1st? Okay. So we, then we need to amend that. You need okay. a motion? Um, to amend? Yes. Would you make that motion, Paul? Or accept as amended, approve as amended. Well, all right. Whatever you're. I move like. to accept as amended. All right. Any second? I second. second. Oh. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Public comments. Liz, Carmel Clay Public Library Foundation. Liz Hamilton. Good evening. Thank you so much for letting us be here this evening. Um, I've explained to Carolyn about all of your amazing support over the past years and how much you've helped us out. So I really wanted to invite Carolyn to come tonight to introduce herself. As you know, Carolyn began Monday, August 17th. So she's been there a whole month almost. So congratulations. So I'm going to turn the mic over to Carolyn and just let her address you and tell you a little bit about herself. Uh, Madam Chairwoman, Board, thank you for having me this evening. Uh, just wanted to come in and say thank you for all your wonderful support. My name is Carolyn Goolsby. I uh, moved to Carmel in July, started at the library on August the 17th, indeed. Um, I moved here from Fort McMurray, Alberta, which is in northern Canada. Uh, I am originally from Savannah, Georgia, but uh, moved up there and uh, had a director position there at Wood Buffalo Regional Library. We uh, covered a, uh, a, an area about 27 and a half thousand square miles uh, to give you, I think Clay Township is 15 square miles, is it? Um, Clay Township is 50 square miles. 50 square miles, okay. So it was a little larger. Um, we had one location, but we traveled a great deal, and I would, you know, I, I would say to people, I don't send people to do programs, I fly people to do programs. We had constituents we could only reach by bush plane or ice road. So it was a little bit different, but people ask me how long I was there, and I tell them how we counted it in Canada, in northern Canada, we counted in winters. Um, I was there two and a half years, three winters, <laughs> and that was, you know, winters were minus 40, and so that gets old. Um, I am just so pleased to be in Clay Township and in Carmel. It's a beautiful area. Um, everyone here has been so welcoming and kind. Um, I've met some of you already and, and we've had our wonderful CCPL to go that came to the township recently and we are so grateful for your support of that. But again, just thank you for all that you do for us. We are committed to serving the people of Clay Township, not just Carmel. And we want to hear your ideas and continue working with you to provide good service. Thanks so much. Thank 
you for coming. Absolutely. I just want to add something. When you brought the bookmobile here and we um, had our pictures taken with it, if you remember, you said, I was checking out this book on tape and, and she made a comment about it. She said, oh, you're right, Johnny, on the spot. Well, I checked out a book on tape and it was so riveting <laughs> that I found myself driving slowly down the street to the supermarket and around the block <laughs> an extra time just so I could hear it and then trying to figure out on my player at home just exactly where it was because mm. it was quite a mystery. It was the girl on the train. So oh, that's, that's a neat a thing one. that Absolutely. the bookmobile is out there and that people use it and I certainly was glad that I had an opportunity to. Well, thank you so much. You know, we're very proud of CCPL to go. It's really going to be a great thing for us, uh, getting services outside of, of our normal downtown area and out to meet people where they are, and we're very happy about it. Great. So thank you very much. Good. Thank you. Liz, thank you. Thanks. Our second speaker is Mark Westemeyer from Carmel Clay Parks. Good evening. It's good to see you all again. I have just a few items I'd like to bring you up to date on. Um, the first one, Mary, which is actually two of them are very dear to your heart. Oh, the good. playground construction has started, the dirt's moving, and um, is going very, very well. And I would like to just publicly talk just for a second about one of the things that we're doing there. Um, we're actually moving the dirt around on site, and we have to lower it quite a bit in order to um, get the playground in where it needs to go. Across the road from it, we have an area that is all um, uh, prairie. And over the last few years, the prairie has slowly been dying. Similar to what happened in West Park, we planted a prairie. It's in an old farm field. The prairie roots grow down to the same depth or deeper than the height of the prairie and completely destroys the farm tiles. When that happens, our drainage stops and the prairie starts to die. So that's happening in this park. So as part of the playground, we're going to be able to move dirt from there, put it over in the prairie, replant the prairie, and that way we'll have it for a much longer period of time and be much more sustainable. The other item is 106th in the Monon Trail. And Mary and I talked about that a number of months ago. And I've had uh, discussions with the county highway department because that falls under their jurisdiction there. And they've done a uh, traffic study and determined that there is a problem there, which is always good to know since we all knew that. Yeah. Um, and what we have suggested and they're working on the engineering for right now is what's called a hawk system. And that would enable that the users along the Monon press a button and there would be a light. There wouldn't be any blinking lights anymore. And that light would start blinking and then ultimately turn uh, red that would stop the traffic to allow trail users to go across. Once they're across and the time's uh, uh, timed out, it starts blinking to yellow and then turns itself back off. So it doesn't impede the traffic like other systems would do. And there's a timing circuit in there that lets us set the length of time so that you don't have somebody coming up every few minutes and hitting it trail users might have to wait until it was their turn once again. So we think that that's going to resolve the problem. Since they're doing the engineering on it right now, I don't have a timeline for when we're going to have it installed, but we're hoping that sometime next year we'll have that in place Good. before there's a serious accident there. Um, the other thing that I think you haven't seen yet is we just finished our 2014 annual report and I brought copies to distribute to you, and it gives sort of the progress of everything that happened uh, last year, which brings you up to date on that. Absolutely. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> and then, as you may well know, um, a number of my staff and I were in Las Vegas uh, last week attending the National Recreation and Parks Association meeting. And during that meeting, um, we received another national award. Uh, the National Recreation Parks Association gives an award out once a year for uh, what's called the Barb King Environmental Stewardship Award. So it's given out with a gold medal we won and because of the size of the city. This award was based upon one park system in the United States is picked per year for what they're doing environmentally. And I brought that to show to you. So um, with that, 
I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have any. Did you win anything? Actually, um, I've been to Las Vegas many times when I was in business for myself, and I learned that uh, gambling isn't a really great way to spend your money. If you're going to spend money in Las Vegas, your best bet is to go to a bar where you actually give money and get something back. <laughs> so, I can't say that for staff, and I will say, Mary, because you would really appreciate this. Um, we hosted um, a pro tour this year for the Flow Rider, so we had pros from all around the United States that came to Carmel uh, to compete. And because of those contacts, um, some of our staff hooked up with the pro people that were out in that area and they arranged for them to go ride the flow rider that was in Hard Rock Cafe when it was closed to the public. So they had a great time. Well, that's wonderful. I think it's a wonderful thing to watch. It is. Art, but I'm not audience participation. Well, we have the newest device, and I don't know if it's in this or not, but we do have logs now so you can learn log, log rolling. We have classes, and you can't get hurt because you just fall in the water. It'll be perfect for you, Mary. Oh, just wonderful. I, I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. The next order of business is the public hearing on the 2016 proposed budget. I'd like to open that at 12 minutes after 6. Anyone who'd like to speak on that, please go to the mic. Seeing no one coming to the microphone, I would like to close the hearing at 12 and a half minutes after 6. Doug, action item, adoption of the 2016 holiday schedule. Yeah, this is something you get every year uh, for uh, the 2016 holidays. We normally follow the county, um, and um, it's just that time we're in the last, well, we'll be going to be in the last quarter of the year here shortly. So I uh, wanted to get this um, uh, to you guys tonight and have you approve it for next year. May I have a motion? So move. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> aye, sorry. Aye. Oh. I was writing. Okay. We're all voting, yes. Information items, fire construction project update. Uh, good evening, John Barbie with Envoy. Um, just here this evening to give you a brief update on your three projects. Uh, we'll start with station 43. If you've driven by there recently, you will see to the west there is a new dormitory expansion um, constructed and uh, being enclosed now. Uh, that's moving right along as anticipated. On the east side, the fitness addition, you will notice that there's nothing there yet. We ran into a, a little snafu with the Vectoring Gas Company. They had an 8-inch gas main that they wanted to relocate for $30,000. If you oh recall, that addition was around $50,000 at bid time, so that didn't seem to quite equate and make financial sense. Um, knowing that, we've redesigned where that is going to go with the fire department. It's now going on the north end, northeast corner. Um, going to one of the bay doors will become a, um, an entrance just off of 106th instead of a drive through where they'll house the ambulance. That redesign has been completed and um, we're validating all the costs with the contractors now. But there's, a, there's some cost premium for that, but it's not going to be the $30,000 cost premium for the um, Vectoring Gas relocation. Um, that will affect schedule overall in that building, but it won't affect their move-in. They're going to move in on time with the dorms and get the engines back in the stations before um, Thanksgiving so we don't have any freezing conditions to worry about. And it'll be about 30 to 40 days where we're tracking right now that they'll have the fitness room after they move in. Uh, station 44, uh, we are working through with the City of Carmel still on some drainage issues. We have currently a foundation only permit, um, working to get that released into the full building um, permit. We do have steel coming here in October um, that we are, the foundations have the basements in, foundations are poured, we're ready to put the steel on there. Um, between that um, coordination with the permits and uh, we got a little bit of a late start with the rains of the summer 
Um, we're tracking about three or four weeks off of where we originally wanted to be. Uh, we do believe that we have opportunity here through the winter to still catch that up um, long term for the move in of the station. Uh, there's no effect with their temporary conditions. Third facility, uh, the maintenance training facility at 106th and Gray, actually went out to bid today. Um, we have uh, the metal building itself is being procured now. It's due to be here um, right before Thanksgiving. And um, if everything tracks through the bids and awards as we're planning right now, we will have foundations in and start erecting that building in December. Um, and then depending on available funds, there's a large alternate for the interior fit out of that um, building. If you recall, we had to scale back kind of their wishes and, and wants. So we were building the shell as the base bid and then the uh, um, interior fit out of the training classrooms and the offices is an alternate bid. <coughs> if we do both of those, um, that project scheduled to finish in June of next year, if we do um, just the shell will be in like March, April. Um, other than that, financially, everything is tracking um, well. We you know, had some miscellaneous unforeseens here and there with some soils or uh, coordination, but nothing that's uh, putting us in any jeopardy on the financial budget. Have you incurred any costs and the delays from getting the permit? <coughs> We have not. You're talking about from contractors? No, from the city. From the city. Getting the permits from the city. Have we, we haven't incurred any cost from contractors from that um, delay in getting we, those permits. Which would be the result of the. Right. Okay. So there are no liquidated damages. It's not pushing their schedule. They haven't mobilized, demobilized. Well, they have mobilized. They've done the foundations. The same contractor on 43 and 44. There's some shared resources there that I think working in our favor. There are no liquidated damages <coughs> that they can claim, but there could be um, general conditions if they chose to. But at this point, um, they're not concerned with making up where we're at now. We, with where steel's, they're in charge of the steel. Steel's not coming until um, mid to th late October. Um, we need the permit for them then. That, if they don't have a permit then, then they will be delayed. That's Myers? Yes. Any questions, Paul? No, that's that's the that's the key right. is to get the permit from the city. Yeah, and D Doug and I have talked about that, and you know we're working with the city to resolve drainage issues that are um, partially the city's. They're not really just this site. It's uh, an ancillary th uh, effect of an issue that's existed for a while. They want some drains cut under uh, Main Street, and um, so we're we're trying to work with them and solve that problem. Um, and reduce some other requirements they were um, making on the project for detention that wasn't really necessary um, to offset those costs. So if they can make some concession here, we can help them there. And the same token, we need to get the permit and get going. So. And Doug, if you're reaching out, I would also like to know why they're having to go through TAC when they should be exempt from it. And Parks Department's exempt from it. Other departments are exempt from it. I think what we've, and I've always done this, even when we built the other two stations, just the courtesy. That, that, that's all it is, is a courtesy to go through so the city knows what's going on. Uh, on the permit, he's talking about, um, I've got to call in to the mayor. We, we, we need to move on this. Uh, and especially since they have, you know, they have been over backwards to, to help. And it's really not necessarily our problem it was before this so so what you know I'm gonna talk to the mayor about it and see um, if we can get this uh, permit so we can move on and, and what I'm saying here how, how are we behind or ahead or whatever on these these construction sites so 43 is on schedule with the dorm edition the fitness edition is behind from that redesign and then it, we're about three or four weeks behind on 44 um, both somewhat permit related some um, rain delays from the very get-go right after we issue notice proceed so any other questions thank you very much welcome financial questions from the board Paul? no no 
Ma'am? Yeah. I do have one. I noticed there was a name, Gary Davis, throughout the financial reports as being paid. I thought that story from you was very interesting. He was a homeless guy. He lived out of his truck and camped out a lot. And I had somebody come to me and mention that to him. So um, <clears throat> he was, somebody gave him a lawnmower. I think it was a relation of his, gave him a lawnmower. And so he now mows our cemeteries. And uh, it's unbelievable the p neighbors that have called me and, and tell, me, tell me how remarkable of a job he does. Some of them even hired him to do some of their yard work. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, so he's just uh, a great person. He's now been able, over the last uh, couple of years, been able to uh, buy some new equipment and, and so a new trailer. So, so um, uh, I thought it was pretty nice that we, we've hired somebody that was homeless that's now doing quite well. That's perfect. Yes. Board comments? None. Any? No. I have one. I have a very nice letter from David Bowden, and I will, who is conductor of the Carmel Symphony, by the way, and I will read you the, just parts of it. Please convey my sincere thank to the Township Board for their generous support of, of the Carmel Symphony and the concert last night. So this was written on Sunday after the concert. This was a huge gift to the CSO and the entire Carmel community. I'm sure that all of our musicians, staff, board, and volunteers join me in expressing our appreciation to you and the board. I personally was thrilled with the attendance and with the audience reception of our celebration last night. There were 1,100 people there, and a lot of them, I mean, a lot of feedback has come through groups that I'm a part of, have said, we didn't realize the symphony could do this. But for those who weren't there, they really did just vignettes of different pieces. So you heard a little of this and a little of that, all kinds of music. And people, the kids were dancing in their seats and, and then they had Dee Wu who, there who was, oh, unbelievable pianist. And she's uh, a young lady in her 20s and just makes that instrument soar. So really, and all the way up to the rafters were people and that was exciting. And tickets, because of this grant, were only $10 a piece for adults and $5 for children. So it was very <coughs> affordable. And afterwards, there was a birthday party with cake, and, and it was really very nice, very well attended, very appreciated, and David Bowden wanted me to express his gratitude to all of you. Um, the, uh, our board financed this uh, with a $30,000 grant, special grant. But 40th anniversary year, very special occasion. And this is one of the many things. But they just, they're so excited about it, they want to do it again. So they may be back. Announcements, Doug? No, I have nothing. Anything from any of you? No. Nope. Adjournment, may I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 What time? The time right now is 22 minutes after 6. We run right through. <laughs>